All right, first and foremost, I like to get off. Get, first and foremost, I like to start off by saying, Call her law, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Kakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles, a great millstone, a salutation to you, brothers, pushing this word in truth and sincerity. All right, now I'm going to start a, another video series too. I got one, you know, going back to the basics, and then I have one going into the history um, of, uh, of Israel. Um, it used to be called History and the Law. But I'm going to have it, um, it's going to be history, the law, and maps. Because I, I kind of want to get into the hi history continually. Um, there's a lot of tidbits in the, in, in the history, you know, um, that can, you know, that we can take those lessons and apply to the times that we're living in now. In particular, this first video that I'm going to go into, I'm going to go into um, Numbers 25. Um, now, you, you're familiar with the story of Balaam and Balak. When you go into that story, uh, you had Balaam and Balak, which I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Balak was the king of Moab and um, Balaam was a prophet. And Balak asked to curse the children of Israel, to curse the children of Israel. But Balaam couldn't do nothing but what the Lord said and bless the children of Israel, even though Balak, a king that had resources, pleaded with uh, Balaam and was angered. That Balaam wouldn't curse the nation of Israel. But when you go into the scripture, what, what got Israel uh, jacked up was um, the Midianitish woman and, and the uh, uh, the gods of the other nations. After that, that's what got Israel jacked up. So what these nations do is they tempt the nation of Israel and entice them by worshiping other gods, which are is a snare and a trap. When you go into the book of Judas, the fifth Judas, the fifth chapter in the Apocrypha, if I'm not mistaken, you had the. Um, try to get, get familiar with these stories, um, stories on the tip of my mind, but there was a, um, it was an Ammonite that was uh, called for of the king of Babylon or one of the Babylonian uh, captains. And he asked them, basically, he wanted intel on the children of Israel, you know, and um what was told of him is if their God is with Israel, you can't overtake Israel. But if they worship another God in their anger and, and their God's anger is kindled against them, that's when you can take them. So these nations, they have taken advantage of the fact that when we worship other gods, it infuriates the gods. I mean, not the gods, the power in heaven, Yahweh. Yahweh that is the heavenly father. That's the power of Israel. And that's the Lord's portion. So let me read this real quick. Let's go into Romans 15 and 4. It says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So it's my hopes by doing these videos to convey different tidbits and different points, you know, going back to the history, you know, and show you that since this happened, this is why this happened or you know, this is an example of what you shouldn't do because this could happen. And this video is more entailed of if this happens, these are the things that could happen. So we're in the time of, let me get this scripture right here, where there's a multitude of uh, of wickedness being brought out here, uh, ideas of wickedness. And to go after them, to go after these devices that are out here will ultimately lead to your death, your destruction, okay? This is Exodus 23 and 2. It says, Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rust judgment. So the scriptures are self-explanatory. It says, Thou shalt not follow a multitude uh, to do evil. And I'll give you an example of a multitude doing evil in the sight of the Lord and them being, um, them by say, me, me say them, I'm talking about the children of Israel being jacked up for it. Okay. It says, Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. So you're not even supposed to speak, okay, in a uh, in a sense to um, cause judgment uh, to be turned away when it's righteous judgment that's supposed to be executed. Okay, um, let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 13. 
And these are the laws of the Heavenly Father. And it, it, it gets, you know, it, basically this is a righteous judgment. But this is uh, Deuteronomy 13 and 6. It reads, if thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or thy wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul entice thee secretly, saying, let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers, namely of the gods of the people which are round about you, meaning the gods of these other nations. It says, nigh unto thee or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. So any god that's not the god that your forefathers worship, you're not supposed to worship them. All right. Our forefathers known of the power of Yahweh. Okay, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob knew of the Heavenly Father. So any other gods outside of the God of Israel, we don't have no dealings with them. So if you have a mother, you're a friend, a, a, a brother, okay, a, a, a daughter, a wife, a friend, somebody that's of your own soul, of your own ilk, and they entice you to secretly worship other gods, they introduce Balaam, for example, Chemosh. These are gods of the other nations. They introduce you to this way of worship. Okay, and the ideas of uh, what this God uh, benefits you. All right, this is what you're supposed to do. It says, namely, of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hear, hearken unto him. Neither shall thy eye pity him, neither shall thou spare, neither shall thou conceal him. But thou shalt surely put him, thou shalt surely kill him. Thy hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterward the hand of the people. And thou shalt stone him with stones that he die, because he have sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy power, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And all Israel shall hear and fear, and shall do no more any such wickedness as this among you. So the reason why the judgment was executed and the judgment was so harsh to a point, if, even if this was your your family member, somebody that loved you, somebody that cared about you, and they secretly entice you to worship other gods, okay, which is causing you, which what would be the cause for you to turn your back onto the Lord, the power of Israel that delivered you from the um that delivered you from Egypt. Okay. This is to take wickedness okay out of israel to take that imagination of hearkening on to another god another nation out of the nation of israel because it could be a snare and a trap unto the nation of israel to our nation as a as a people as a whole even homosexuality anything that the lord looks upon as an abomination and cause the lord to turn his face from israel is a threat to our survival is a threat to our livelihood we being a nation of people so the other nations took advantage of that and they know that, look, we can entice them to worship other gods or our gods. OK, and then that's how we're going to we're going to um, overtake them. So let's go into the point right here. This is the book of uh, Numbers 25. And we'll start at the top. It's a quick read. It's only 18 verses. And the reason and the cause of this, this taking place and the Lord bringing forth judgment on the nation of Israel, there was a recompense, there was a payback to the nation that had a hand in, 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 in um, having this take place, having these events take place. So not only did the nation of Israel, the wicked of our people get jacked up that didn't hearken unto the Lord, but the Lord commanded Israel to, to smite the Midianites, all right, because of this. So let's read this. This is number 25 and 1. It says, And Israel abode in Shedem, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. See, they went after the gods of the other nation, in particular the god of uh, Moab. It says, And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods, and the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. Which this is a, uh, this is a, a grave error. Okay, because this is going to lead to the death of a lot of Israelites. It says, And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. 
And the Lord said to Moses, take all the people, take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun. That the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. See? So Israel went off. Our people went off. Our people went off. And the Lord consulted with Moses, who at that time was a was the priest. He was a high priest. He was a prophet. He was the head of Israel, basically. He was the king of Israel. And it was told Moses to take the take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said unto the judge of Israel, Slay ye every one his men that were joined to Baal Peor. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping before the door at Tabernacle of the congregation. And when Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest saw it, he rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. And those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. So this is how it really gets. This is how it really gets. Twenty four thousand people were killed of the plague of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. OK, and Phineas. He had to do what he had to do. He was zealous for the Lord and he took that javelin and he executed judgment upon the man of Israel and that many United woman to stay the plague of the nation of um, Israel. And this was back during the time when we were in the wilderness. So how much more so now the Heavenly Father have allowed all of this wickedness to intensify. All right. Because what? There's going to be a plague coming. All right. It's going to be a plague that's going to take place. And it's going to be a plague of death. And this is how the Heavenly Father gets down. You know, you you didn't have back then. Um, I mean, I said you didn't you don't have now. Well, you have now the prophets of Yahweh Bashim al to warn you of what's to come. OK. But. In that day. All right. There's not going to be. A prophet of the Lord to come and take away the plague that's going to go on the multitude of Israel, the two thirds, you know. But this is a quick video. I don't want this video to go too long because I'm doing this on my phone. And um, yeah, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. And salutations to you brothers that's pushing this word in truth and sincerity. All right. Yeah, Yahweh Bashim al Shah bring forth plagues upon the world. As in written in um second Ezra the fifteenth chapter, sword, famine, death, and destruction. Alright? And we want to be protected from these plagues that Yahweh Bashim al Shah is gonna bring upon the world. Alright? So we want that the wah, the exemption from judgment. You know. That mark. So with that, shalom.